Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Vin, and this is the monthly wrap-up for February of 2023. February of 2023 uh, has come to an end, and um, I got a few books read. I got four books, uh, four I should say adult books. Um, <laughs> I read some stuff with my son as well. Uh, throughout this month, but I'm only talking about the I'm only go, going to be talking about the ones that are especially for adults, uh, and I'm not going to spend too much time on these. All of these books I have discussed in more detail in my Fresh Red Kills videos, or you know maybe I've had a at least one of these cases like the Landmark Xenophon. I had a video just dedicated to that. So if you want to know more details about my thoughts, you could always go and check out those videos. Uh, for this. This video is just a, a summary, a very brief summary of the things that I read and just uh, overall impressions. Um, so starting off with work of fiction. Uh, I I try to get at least one work of fiction in every month. I am mostly a nonfiction reader, um, but I'm trying to read more and more fiction. And in the beginning of this month, I went to something kind of light, uh, and I went for Shoeless Joe by W.P. Kinsella. Um, this is the film, sorry, this is the movie that the film Field of Dreams was based on. Uh, Kinsella was a Canadian writer, and this was published in the, I believe, early 80s. Let me just double check. Yeah, 82. And um, I really enjoyed this. Uh, I wouldn't consider myself a baseball fan. Um, I like going to things like minor league baseball games. Um, I like the environment there. I enjoy watching the game. Uh, but I don't really watch it on, I don't watch baseball on TV. I don't follow the majors. Um, so I wouldn't. I don't like it enough to call myself a fan, but I do like baseball. But I've always liked the movie Field of Dreams. And I watched it over the summer with my son, and we both really enjoyed it. I do think it's a great father-son movie. And I thought, oh, yeah, that's right, that movie is based on a book. And lo and behold, uh, you know, serendipity happened. Uh, it's a loud car going by, maybe you can hear that. Um, and uh, I went into a Goodwill, you know, local kind of charity shop, secondhand store, and um, saw a copy, and I really like this uh, UK cover, actually. Um, and picked it up and figured, you know what, I'm just going to read this. I want something light, and this fit the bill. And I really like this. Uh, it mostly follows along with the movie. Um, there are some changes here and there. I think in some ways the movie improved on some of the aspects of this, but I really enjoyed the writing, the prose. Um, it was it was a good time. Uh, I think W.P. Kinsella... You know, he has a great way with words in a lot of ways. It's just a, a cool kind of, um, you know, magical realist type of story. Uh, a little bit of fantasy here and there. And um, it's very, very creative. Um, and, yeah, I, I liked it. Um, even though, like I said, I'm not a baseball fan, they still kind of evoke that sense of nostalgia in me. And uh, Kinsella's love of baseball comes through very, very clear. Um, but it's not in a way that is kind of distracting or would be off-putting to a non-fan. Um, it's all very endearing. So, I enjoyed this quite a bit. I'm glad I read this. Then, I worked on much bigger work. <laughs> um, this was for Historathon 2023, uh, a year-long event where we are looking at nonfiction history. Uh, we have divided the year up into four quarters. Uh, the first quarter, three months, uh, January, February, March, is prehistory up to 500 CE. Um, and I read this as part of a buddy read with Mark over at Book Time with Elvis and also a subscriber, uh, Stephanie. And we actually had a very good time with this. Um, this is an, it's an ancient work from the 4th century BCE. Uh, it's Xenophon's personal account. Um, for the most part, he kind of, he kind of writes himself as though he's, a uh, you know, sometimes an impartial observer at times, but uh, he does kind of get into the thick of things because he is a character. He experienced this. Um, this is his recounting of when he was a mercenary, a Greek mercenary, following Cyrus, the brother to the Persian emperor. Persian emperor. Um, when they went to uh, went to basically, they were just outside Babylon when they tried to take the throne from Cyrus's brother, and Cyrus was killed in battle, stranding around ten thousand Greek soldiers in Babylon, and they have to fight their way back home. And uh, this was actually quite engaging at times, kind of thrilling. It moved along quickly. Um, it never really got boring. Um, we do have, like, in the last, maybe, this is divided up into books. Uh, the last couple of books, maybe that sense of urgency is gone, but it's still really interesting. There's still some great scenes. And we really had a lot of fun with this. And uh, if you're interested, the video that I made, I talk about how we discovered that um, <laughs> in our conversations, uh, as we were buddy reading, that the movie Warriors 
uh, from the late 70s was actually based on uh, Xenophon's Anabasis. And we watched it together, and I have my thoughts on them inside the video. So um, please, if you're interested in that, uh, check it out. But I really enjoyed this, and I really enjoyed especially the Landmark edition. Uh, as usual, Landmark does a terrific job with the footnotes, with the uh, the marginalia, the, uh, you know, as you can see, the different artifact pictures. There's um, plenty of maps as well. Let's see if I can find... There's maps all over the place. And then when I go to look for one, I can never find one easily. Uh, yeah, I'm looking too, looking too far back. There we go. There's a map. So the maps also really, really help. But I would highly recommend this if it is something that sounds interesting to you. And particularly that edition. Uh, next, I read a very quick book, um, but a really fun one. I had a great time with this. More fun than I was expecting to have, and I knew I was going to have a good time. And that is A Short History of Drunkenness by Mark Forsyth. Uh, he is essentially, you know, true to his word, he, it is the how, why, where, and when humankind has gotten merry from the Stone Age to the present. And he does. He goes from prehistory all the way up to the modern day. Uh, each chapter focuses on kind of a different time period, the different culture, and how not just alcohol, but particularly drunkenness, uh, played a role inside that society. So it could be something religious, or it could be something that the authorities wanted to oppress, or it could be something the authorities wanted to promote for different reasons. Um, so, uh, you know, he does it with some dry wit throughout, some sarcasm, um, but it's never, it's never um, uninformative. Um, I always felt like I was learning uh, in a very fun way the entire time. So I would highly recommend this one if this sounds like something interesting to you. And the last book that I finished for uh, the month of February was this one, Alexander the Great by Paul Cartledge. Uh, there is a subtitle of this called The Hunt for a New Pass, which you don't see on the cover. And uh, once again, this was also read for, just like these, the previous two, was read for Historathon 2023. And I wasn't sure what, to th what I was expecting going into this. I was hoping that I was going to get something of a biography uh, because it's not very specific as far as um, subtitles go. Uh, but really, it's not that. Um, it is more of an examination of his character. And the book is divided thematically, not really chronologically. Uh, and that, to me, got a little bit frustrating at times um, because he would jump around along the timeline quite a bit. And it also was prone to being repetitive in a lot of ways. Uh, so I struggled, especially with the first half of this book. I had a hard time becoming engaged with it. Um, and sometimes I got a little more frustrated and sometimes confused um, about exactly when and where we were talking again and how all this relates to other parts of his life. Uh, but the second half is sort of winning me over more. Uh, we start getting into more discussions of his of his character, of his deification, and we get into his historiography, um, how he's been looked at over time, and uh, a really good um, appendix essay about the primary sources used to uh, understand who Alexander was and the challenges of using them. So uh, this is a book that, you know, I'm ultimately glad that I read. It's one that I'm going to keep, but um, I wouldn't recommend it to people who are new to Alexander. I think you would need to read something like a more of a straight biography before you went into something like this. So those are the books that I finished. Uh, I'm going to make a stack here and summarize really quickly. I'm going to do it by size, not really by order. So on the bottom here, we've got uh, the landmark Xenophon's Anabasis. We've got then uh, Alexander the Great by Paul Cartledge. Then we got A Short History of Drunkenness by Mark Forsyth, or Forsyth, I don't know. And then we got Shoeless Joe by W.P. Kinsella. Uh, if you've read any of these, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And as always, thank you, BookTube.